Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome to Friday's live stream. I am so excited to be here and I'm so grateful you could join me today. If you are joining me on the live, just pop a quick comment in and let me know where you're coming in from and I just would love to shout you out and say hello. If you are joining on the replay, hello and welcome. And if you have any questions along the way, please be sure to put them in the comments and I will be following back up with some, with the questions, with the answers to the questions in the comments. So I hope you are well. I'm really excited to see everyone here and I'm just excited to be here today. I have a lot of wonderful things I want to share today. Our overall theme for today is watercolor techniques for paper crafters. So I am going to be covering some of my favorite watercolor techniques for my card making and paper crafting projects. So I have a bunch of different supplies here that I'm going to share and some of the techniques that I like to use in my card making projects. So super, super fun, pretty easy going. And this video will also be posted on my YouTube channel the whole entire video. So it's like another tutorial on YouTube. So I have a couple, before we dive in to the tutorial today, I have a couple uh, announcements I wanna make and just some things I wanna share because I've had a lot of things come out this week and I just wanna make sure that you've had an opportunity to see them. So I'm going to click over to my screen share really quickly to share two big tutorials that I've shared this week. Um, let's go ahead and take a peek. So over on my blog at indigojadeart.com slash blog, pretty easy. If you go to indigojadeart.com, you can also click on the link for the blog or you'll find the updated blog posts on the home page. So in the blog this week, I have two brand new tutorials that I'm sharing two new art tutorials. I'm gonna go ahead and move my face here so that you can see this. Let's just go ahead and move me so that we can make sure that we see the two tutorials. So this week's card tutorial was all about watercolor techniques with dye ink. So I'm gonna pull that up. You can take a look at the full tutorial with commentary right here on my blog, or you can head over to my YouTube channel. But I really did focus quite a bit on the washy washy watercolor technique that I talked a little bit on last week's live stream, and I'm definitely going to be talking about it more today. But there's a full video uh, that I have live this week, so you can take a peek at that. And I also have this brand new tutorial called, um, it's an art exploration. Every month at the very beginning of the month in 2020, I am launching an, a, more of an elongated watercolor tutorial that is an art exploration. So this month is all about the color green and I painted the this Luna Moth in Daniel Smith greens and I have it here um, in the tutorial and I also have the, I'm scrolling down so that you can see the free download and the illustration that's available for you to paint along with me. So super, super fun. The last thing that I wanna share, and I'm going to just click over to one more thing, is last week I shared the Blooming with Joy note card and coloring project, and I'm gonna reference it again a little bit today, but if you're interested, you can uh, subscribe to my email list and get that note card project for free along with this butterfly art print download. So I will be sure to put the link in the description um, after we do the live today. But if you go back to my website at indigojadeart.com, you can easily click that word subscribe and it'll take you there as well. So those are just some quick announcements that I wanted to share because I wanna make sure um, I share a lot of different things in YouTube and in my social media feeds, but sometimes we don't always see everything right away. So I just wanted to kind of 
let you know that those two tutorials were available this week. So if you're heading into the weekend and you're looking for some inspiration tutorials or something to uh, watch to get your crafty mojo going, it's available to you on my YouTube channel and my blog. So, okay, before we dive in to our watercolor techniques for paper crafters, I just want to say that I hope you are well. I hope things are uh, going well for you and you're staying safe uh, in these unusual times that we're all living in. But one of the things that is driving me to come in on Fridays and do these live streams and be more present um, in video with you is because it is my belief that one of the best things that we can do for our self-care and taking care of ourselves is to create and make something with our hands and to just lose ourselves in creating something. And it is my superpower to teach and to share and try to inspire others and bring more joy into our daily lives. So that's why I'm coming in more frequently and hope to be popping in more with our live streams. So it's good to see you here. So before we um, head down to the project cam, I just want to say thank you for joining and I'm so, so grateful that you're here with me. So let's go ahead and head down to our project cam and I'm going to get started with two basic watercolor techniques for paper crafting and card making today. And I'm gonna show some of my favorite supplies. Now just know there are lots of different ways to watercolor. There are lots of different things that you can do. I hope that what I'm sharing with you today will inspire you to get out the supplies you already have and just start playing and pushing them a little to see what you can do with them. So let's go ahead and head down to our project cam. So I've got a couple things here to share and again if you have any questions along the way don't hesitate to pop them into the comments and I will also be following up after the live. So hopefully I can get to them and there's a little bit of a delay sometimes with comments, but um, we're gonna we're gonna do this thing and we're gonna do this thing live. Okay, so a couple, let's start with some of my favorite paper crafting supplies for creating watercolor techniques with my card making. Dye inks are fantastic to use for watercoloring. Now, often we uh, will just think about using our dye inks to ink up our stamp and to stamp down onto our paper, but we can really use our dye inks, mash them down onto our craft mat and use them as a watercolor ink. Now, I have several video tutorials on my YouTube channel where I've done this, including the tutorial that I shared this week. So this is just one thing that we all have in our craft stash. We all have our favorite dye-based inks and you can use them as a watercolor medium. So that's one thing. The next thing that I have here are a variety of brush markers and I'm going to share some of these brush markers and which ones I kind of like more than others. So these are the real brush pens from Arteza. And I kind of dig these. They're really nice brush pens. Um, I like working with them. They, look, I can't even get that lid off. I like working with them. They have a nice tip. I'm going to kind of show you, let me just pull a piece of paper here. We'll show you a little sample of what the Arteza looks like. My only issue with it, and you can see here that sometimes that tip frays a little bit, so it makes it a little bit hard to work with. Um, so as a brush pen, I like it, but the only other issue I have with it is sometimes it's a little hard. If I don't work quickly, it's a little hard to break down the color and get it to move. So it's one of those kinds of brush, uh, 
brush pens, this particular brand that I think is valuable to use on your craft mat. Okay, so I'm kind of getting into brands a little bit. I really wasn't going to do that, but um, that's just kind of how it goes. So if you see here, it's a little bit easier to manage it if you have this particular brand of brush pen down onto your craft mat first and then apply it to your paper. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about papers too because papers matter with our projects, but I'm going to get to that in a minute or two. Um, so that's the Arteza brush pen. I don't often reach for these as much as I'd like. And the reason is, is because you really have to work quickly with them, but these are a nice, um, affordable brush pen. Okay. We have our Tombow brush pens. They're fantastic. One of the other things about the Tombows is that I really enjoy using them, but using them as a watercolor medium, um, direct to paper. If I'm using it direct to paper, as you see right here, I'm able to kind of blend it out pretty easily. So it's pretty quick. My favorite thing to do with them is to put them down onto a craft mat, lift them up and then use them. I feel like I have more control that way. So Tombows are, have been around a long time. We love them. Um, I have a full set of these and I feel like they are, there's lots of different techniques that you can do with them. And I really enjoy working with them. They are a great brush pen. They do dye. Look at that. They do stain a little bit. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. We have our Zig um, Clean Color Real Brush Pens. This is another great uh, brush pen really intense color when you do direct to paper with it it's it blends out pretty well but you can see some of those lines still so you kind of have to work quickly with any brush pen I really feel like sometimes the best way to to work with them is to work with them direct from the craft mat to your paper if smoothie blends are your thing and a little bit less texture and lines, if smoothie blends are your thing, this is kind of the way to go with uh, the brush pens. So those are the zigs and they really stain as well, but that's okay. And then one of the newer um, brush pens on the scene are the Karen brush markers. Now I really dig these. I dig them. I like them. I think they're nice to work with, but they are very, very similar to me working with them as like some of the other streaking when you're working direct to paper with them. And now this is on some Bristol paper and I'm going to explain that in a minute. So I tend to take my Karen brush markers when I'm working with them, put them down on the craft mat and then begin to build up my layers from there. So that is the Karen brush markers. I enjoy working with them and each one of them are just fantastic. Those are the, these are the ones that are in my stash of brush markers that, uh, that are water-based, dye-based, um, ink, uh, brush markers. So I enjoy using them. Hey, Nancy, I just saw that you popped in. Hello, hello. Good to see you. I hope to see you soon in real life at Photo Scraps. So these are my favorite brush markers. These are the ones I have in my stash. And you can virtually get great watercolor techniques and watercolor results with these brush markers. Now there's just a difference, like I said, with how you apply them to paper whether you're using them on your craft mat and applying them wet to dry paper, or you apply them directly to your paper and you try to spread them out. It can be a little bit more difficult. Okay, last week I talked about watercolor, um, the different watercolor mediums. Here's a pan set. So yes, you could use your watercolor pan sets. You could use your tubes. You could use your liquid watercolors and absolutely get your water, your um, watercolor techniques 
for your paper crafting, but more often than not, as paper crafters, we have our die basings, we have our brush markers, we have these kinds of tools to work with. So that's why I'm kind of honing in and focusing on them today. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about um, paper, but I'm gonna answer this question that just came in from Nancy about the Arteza brush markers. Have you tried them? Yes. So Nancy, I shared them at the, at the beginning of the markers. Now, I do enjoy this marker, this brush marker. I don't enjoy them as much as I enjoy the Zig Clean Color Real Brush. The ink formulations are very simil similar. My issue with the Arteza is the tip because I feel like it frays a lot and it gives some inconsistent uh, flow of ink. But I do find that the color range is extremely vibrant and it's it's quite an affordable set to get, the real brush pens, and I do enjoy using them. I just tend to use them not direct to paper. I tend to take my color and, and brush it down onto my craft mat, then lift it up with my brush and water and use it from there. So I hope that, oops, I hope that answered your question, but I do enjoy using them, but I find that I will um, grab the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens more often than not, or even my Tombos, and more recently the Karen Brush Markers, because the, the intensity of the Karen Brush Markers are just, they're, it's like super jacked. They're just really, really intense. Okay, so I hope that helped Nancy. Thank you for asking. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about watercolor paper and stamping and some the, of the techniques that we can get. Um, oh, Nancy, I have, I'll have to try using it on the craft mat. They don't work as well for me direct. Yes, they don't. You're absolutely right, Nancy. Here is my Arteza direct to paper. They don't blend as well. And this is a piece of Bristol and I'm gonna show it on the 100% cotton paper too. They don't work well. In general, I feel like a lot of brush markers don't work well direct to paper. They work better when you put the, the ink down on the craft mat and you either lift it up with a brush, water and brush, or your water brush. Um, the direct to paper is always gonna deliver this kind of inconsistent, not smoothy blend kind of results. And Nancy, because you are a Copic marker goddess, queen, amazing with your Copic markers and the smoothie, smoothie blends that you create with your Copic markers, this, I can totally understand why the direct to paper with the brush markers would be disappointing or feel disappointing. So totally agree with you. Okay, so I'm gonna move on and talk a little bit about paper. Um, when I'm working with water-based markers or water or my inks, I want to use, I often, you often see in my tutorials, I'm talking about 100% cotton paper, but I want to talk a little bit about Bristol, using Bristol paper, especially with some of the, um, the clean color or the real brush markers you can get some really nice results with the Bristol paper. So here's a couple samples. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this card right here. This is what I call that washy washy watercolor technique that you can, that I created this whole thing with a combination of brush markers and dye based inks. So I'm going to replicate that look and feel here on this 100% cotton paper. Washy washy watercolor effects work super well on 100% cotton watercolor paper or even the Canson cellulose paper that I talked about last week. Now I have a couple samples of the 100% cotton paper. My absolute favorite, and if you've followed me for a long time or a while or a little while, my absolute favorite is the Bee Paper Company watercolor paper. 
This is my jam. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, it's become a little bit difficult to acquire. Um, it's been sold out on Amazon, Dick Blick, and other places, even direct from the bee paper company for quite some time, which is kind of disappointing because I'm not well stocked in this paper now. I think I have like two sheets left, so kind of disappointing. So another paper that I've been test driving for a long time since la late last summer is this Arteza 100% cotton cold press paper. And that's the paper that I have here. And I'm digging this paper. It is a nice, I would rank this right up there with the B Paper Company paper. So this paper is accessible. So I've been using this one a lot. So I'll make sure that that link is uh, put back in the replay as well. So you, if you're interested in this paper, you can, you can find it. You can buy it direct from Arteza or on Amazon as well. So washy washy watercolor effects for card making work the best when we're working with 100% cotton watercolor paper, in my opinion, okay? Watercolor paper across the board for washy washy effects. For the Bristol paper, which is more of a smoother paper, but it has a tooth to it, a lot of the techniques that we like to do with brush markers are possible on our Bristol. So first I just want to, I'm going to start off with the 100% cotton and just kind of show you what I mean by this. So here are two other card examples. This is the tutorial from this week on the YouTube channel where I really took a deeper dive in using the uh, Gina K dye base markers and the Karen brush markers to create this washy washy watercolor card, but I'm going to do a quick version of that here on this live stream. So I have that. And then here's another card tutorial I have on my YouTube channel to create that washy washy look with just your inks or your brush markers. So I'm just going to show you how I do it with my dye based inks because we all have so many in our stash. So I take my dye based inks and I just mash them down onto my craft mat. I like to use a bigger, like you can use your water brush and it's perfectly fine, but I like to use a big round brush and lots of water and just kind of reanimate all of that dye and just get that nice and juicy. And then I will go in and wet the paper first. I'm gonna bring this up here so that you can see a little bit better. I will go in, I will wet the paper first. Get that nice and juicy and wet. And then I will drop my dye ink in. And the more, and it's really super wet, you can kind of dry it off a little bit around the edges if you'd like. Just kind of let that bleed out, have some fun there. And when I feel like my dye ink is just gotten too light because I've added so much water, I just kind of go in and dip that down. You can also use your reinkers. So if you have reinkers for your for your dye inks, you can use your reinkers and just plop them down and use those for your watercoloring. So this gives us that washy, washy watercolor. I can even pull that dye out, just kind of pulling it out here. I can pull it out and just keep extending the look of that color. I'm going to put some of that yellow. This is just the wild dandelion from Gina K. I'm going to pop and I'm going to pop that yellow like in that middle and let those two kind of blend. Now, this is what I would call a first wash of color. So we've got a first really, really light wash with these dye based inks. And then after it dries, I can add another layer. And the more I add, the more layers I add, letting it dry in between, the intensity, I can jack up the intensity of that color. So here I wanna show, so this was wetting the paper first, dropping the dye based ink in can do the exact same thing 
with any of these brush markers. So if I were to take my Karen brush marker and drop it down here and just get it nice and juicy, you can reanimate the color. Like I'm going to drop that in just right on top of what I did. And you can already see that the, the intensity of the color is getting even, we're getting even more uh, brighter. We're getting it, uh, it's starting to glow a little bit more. So if I were to go, I'm going to do it with the Tombow so that you can see. Tombow, same thing. Clear brush, like if I did it with the, uh, the Zig, same thing. I can create, here's the Tombow. I'm going to drop some of that Tombow color in. And I can take some of the Zig and just drop that down. So we all have these in our stash. Many of us do, right? We have many, many brush markers in our stash. But sometimes we don't think about using them as a washy watercolor medium because we think about using them the traditional way, which is as a brush marker. But you can easily, easily reanimate the color. Dye inks, brush markers, by putting them down on your craft mat, adding water to them, and shampoo, you have a watercolor medium. So we have it and it's fun and you just want to give it a go. I'd love to see you give it a go. Pull these things out of your stash and go for it. Okay, now I want to show the brush markers going direct to paper. Now, if I were to take my Karen brush marker and go direct to paper to start to color some in something in, I'm going to be able to reanimate it and get it to bleed out because I'm using the 100% cotton paper because the, the brush marker is going, the, the dye ink from the brush marker is going into the fiber of the paper and it's, it's going to spread out. So I'm able to reanimate and get a smoothie blend with that Karen brush marker. Let's see what we get with the Zig. Sometimes I've had mixed results with brush markers like this on 100% cotton paper. So, woohoo, shampoo, shampoo. Look at that. Oh, I love that pink too. That really, really uh, animated, reanimated, and didn't give me that um, textured look. It's giving me that smoothie, smoothie blend. Let's try the Tombow right here. Ooh, the Tombow. Ooh, I can hear it scratching. Oh, look at that. Juicy. So brush markers on 100% cotton paper is very, very successful way to do direct to paper. So it does blend out really nicely. So Nancy, that's one alternative. Um, with working with brush markers direct to paper. Always make sure you're using 100% cotton watercolor paper. Now I'm going to go in with the Arteza. Now this is a brown tone. So that's really going to show up. And you can see that the Arteza is a little less consistent um, with brushing it on. But I'm going to go ahead and blend it out. Oh, that's juicy. Let's, look at, let's let some of that pink go in there. So the Arteza brush marker blends out really well on the 100% cotton. Really, really super, super well. Um, and yes, Nancy, like I said at the beginning, paper is everything. There are different papers to use for different mediums. When we're using our Copic markers, we're using some really smooth papers that are Copic friendly. When we want to do watercolor techniques, especially these washy washy ones, we want to use a nice 100% cotton paper. If you want to use the Canson paper, which is more of a cellulose paper, which means the wood pulp has been smashed and compressed, you get a little bit of a different kind of a technique. The colors tend to lift up a little bit more and you have to work that paper a little bit harder to get the look and feel, but it is possible. So washy washy watercolor techniques, always a winner on 100% cotton paper. Now Bristol paper has a tooth to it. 
the brand that I use for Bristol is um, a Strathmore. You can also get um, get it in a couple other brands, but it's a vellum finish. So it works really well with lots of dry media. So um, it works super, super well with dry media. It works well for us as a paper craft, as paper crafters, when we want to use some of our brush markers on a smoother paper that isn't textured. Now, normally we're stamping on papers that are like 80 pound, super smooth white. My favorite white is the Gina K Designs heavyweight uh, cardstock and the layering weight cardstock. But I struggle to use watercolor techniques with those papers sometimes. So that's why I'm sharing the watercolor paper and the Bristol paper today. So Nancy, you said that you've been using the Canson XL. Yes, I talked a lot about the Canson XL paper last week. The Canson XL is a decent paper for watercolor techniques. The issue I have with it is that whenever you go direct to paper with it, with a brush marker or a dye based ink or or sometimes even your watercolor what happens is you get that immediate staining of what you've put direct to paper if you go to the if you make the paper wet first and you drop your color in like we've done over here you'll have some more successful results um, when you go direct to paper on the canson the paper takes the ink right into the texture and it doesn't let you move it. It likes become becomes almost an, a permanent thing, which is upsetting. <laughs> it can be challenging and paper, paper matters. That's, um, we use different papers for different things that we want to create with. Okay. So I'm zipping back to the Bristol paper here. I like to use Bristol paper when I want to do a direct to paper technique with the brush marker. And I have a video on my YouTube channel where I've actually embossed an image and I've done some Zig clean color brush work with it, but I'm gonna show it to you here. So I'm going to go direct to paper and I'm gonna use my water brush. Now this isn't a watercolor paper. So if you try to do washy, washy, saturated techniques with it, you're going to end up pilling the paper. And that's what would happen with any kind of smooth or vellum finished paper. So we're working with a much lighter hand. So I'm going to take a little bit of this zig and just kind of pop a little bit of color down onto the tip of that flower. Then I'm going to take my water brush and you notice I didn't squeeze my water brush. I'm going to take my water brush and just pull that color down to the base of that petal and try to blend it out a little bit here. I'm able to reanimate and reactivate that brush pen, that brush marker, but I'm not squeezing this and adding a lot of water to the paper. And you can see that I can get a nice smoothie blend with the zig or with the brush pen by just putting a little bit at the top and drawing it down with a little bit of water. Now it's not wet. It's not super wet. It's not washy washy like it is over here. Totally different kind of technique. This is a great way to do your no line water coloring or your, when you want to color in your petals or your project individually and you want to use your brush markers. So I'm going to, that is the Zig direct to paper. I'm going to use the Karen brush marker direct to paper and I'm going to come up here and just do a little bit of the petal. I always feel like though with this technique, that you kind of need to work quick because the paper, you can see what I mean. The Karen brush marker, I'm getting those lines. So I really have to work a lot harder with this, this brush marker doing it direct to paper. Um, and I'm gonna just show you a little bit here on this side. So, and the, the quicker I work, 
doesn't seem to matter. See how it's, I'm able to pick up that ink and use it, but I'm getting those hard and fast lines because it's drying very, very quickly. So I have found that the zig works best on the Bristol. Let's go ahead and grab a Tombow. I got a little Tombow here. Let's take the Tombow and put that over here. Tombow stays pretty wet. Let's see if I can get that baby to move. Now I can get the Tombow to move a little bit better than I did, a lot better than I did the Karen brush marker. And I'm able to use it as a direct to paper watercolor medium. So brush markers are fantastic for direct to paper. You just have to know which brush marker to use. Hi Colleen, you're very, very welcome. And if you miss parts, part of the tutorial, you know, you can catch it on the replay. And yes, it does blend out nicely, doesn't it, Nancy? So my pick for using direct to paper for brush markers, direct to paper on a Bristol is always going to be these zigs because you get that vibrancy. Now we all have those Tombos in our stash and they're working really, really well too. But some of our other um, newer on the market pieces aren't working as well. So if you wanted to use your dye ink or your re, you know, your refills for your dye inks, you can do a little bit of direct to paper. Now I've got this water brush. Now I'm not squeezing it. This is just a little bit wet, but it's not super, super saturated. I'm going to lift some of this color up and I'm going to start to plop it in. Now, when you're doing this with the dye based, this is what I found. If you drop down and you start to try to blend, that initial drop, the droplet that you put down is going to stain and it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be difficult to, bleed, to blend out. See that drop? Now, I could work that drop and work that drop until this paper starts to, to peel and I'm not going to be able to blend that out. I can add a little bit more around it. So the key to working with your dye based inks on a smooth paper, like your Bristol or a vellum paper, is to work a lot quicker, a lot quicker. So you see my hands are moving really quickly. I need to work a lot quicker and not stop if I want smoothie, smoothie effects. I can drop some color in over top and create some variation in the values of the color there. Sorry, I hit the camera. But those are some of the results that you get from different papers. So different papers will give you different watercolor results. My favorite is always, always going to be 100% cotton because I like to do all these super fun washy washy techniques. But the important thing to know is that we all have a lot of these fun products in our paper crafting stash and you want to get them out and push them, push them to see what you can do. But paper does matter. You're going to get different effects on different papers. So I'm going to share um, this card, which uses the same stamp. And I did some no line watercoloring with this. And I think that I'm going to have a separate tutorial for no line watercoloring because that goes on forever. That is one of those techniques that take a little bit longer to work with, but I wanted to talk about it really quickly. My favorite, um, my favorite two amalgam inks. I have used these two amalgam inks from Gina K. I have this barely there and warm glow that I use to stamp out the image so that I can get my no line watercoloring technique going. There's lots of different um, no line watercoloring inks that are out there or fadeaway inks and things like that. So I did this whole card with a combination of brush markers and dye inks. So layering those colors in, letting them dry in between, enabled me to get that glow going. And you can achieve that too with your water-based mediums that you already have in your stash. Yes, thank you, Nancy, for that 
that card is beautiful. Thank you. And Merla, hello. I hope you are well. Yes, Merla. Bristol is very similar to hot press watercolor paper. I'm glad you brought that up. Hot press watercolor paper is something that I don't use that often for my watercolor projects, but it is fantastic for your paper crafting projects. And um, I'll be sure to, to bring that into another tutorial. Thanks for the idea, Merla. It's fantastic because it's smooth and you, again, it's like Bristol, you have to work kind of quicker, but it's not as good, I feel, as for washy-washy techniques, but it's fantastic for direct to paper techniques. So my winner here for Bristol and doing direct to paper is the Zig Clean Color Real Brush. Love it, absolutely love it. And also the Tombows. You know, I love my Tombows. They've, I've had them for a really long time. They're a really fun brush marker to use. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, Colleen, that's a great idea. Next Friday, coming live, doing the no line watercoloring. I think that's where I was headed because what I'm gonna do, and now that you've mentioned it, what I'm gonna do next Friday is I'll have an illustration that's a little bit larger and we'll do some, I'll dissect it and we'll do some no line watercoloring, go petal to petal with it so that you understand kind of how I approach it. Cause sometimes our stamps, remember our stamped images aren't very big so sometimes it feels challenging to go in and work each petal and it can be frustrating to do no line watercoloring where when we're doing washy washy watercoloring it's faster it's quicker we can get some fast super color you know supercharged color techniques really quickly and beyond with our day no line watercoloring takes just a little bit longer but the effects are just beautiful and but we have to have a different level of patience. So I think um, I think that, yeah, that could be next week's live. I think that's a great idea, Colleen. Yes. And yes, Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor, his Distress inks, like his whole line of inks, the Distress uh, inks, the uh, the Oxide inks, like I have all of them. And I have many, many tutorials where I've used them for watercoloring and I've even used the inkers, the re-inkers for watercoloring. So I use them the exact same way I would use any dye-based inks. They are great to use because their colors are, are very vibrant. The Gina K line, I will be honest, is probably the brightest in the dye-based line when you're using it like this, this washy way for watercolor. Um, but I always, I tend to go to my distress inks because they were meant for watercoloring. They were meant to add water to them and for water-based techniques. So I'll bring them into next week's tutorial and we'll do some no-line watercoloring with distress inks. And I'll do a little bit of a difference between the distress inks, brush markers, and maybe some pan, maybe some pans, we'll see. And I'll definitely have an illustration that I'll be able to share with you guys um, ahead of time if you want to color along. We'll have a little color along kind of thing. So, okay. So that will be for next week. And we've kind of talked a little bit about my washi-washi technique and direct-to-paper technique. Did anybody have any other questions? Oh, one more thing. Ooh, gotta love the lives. So at the beginning of the announcement, I talked about this, um, the Blooming with Joy note card coloring project. And if you haven't downloaded that, you can go, uh, I'll put the link in. You can subscribe to my email list and you can get this as a download along with a free art print of mine. But I also have two different versions and these are A2 size. I have two different versions of it one in the solid black and one a little bit lighter so that you can do um, you can do the no lime watercoloring. But to show you what that looks like, there's two examples. So here is coloring that up with the lines and here is the beginning of coloring that up when it's lighter. So super fun, super, super fun. So that's kind of a nice little 
preview for our no line watercoloring next week, except I'll have a different, um, a different illustration for us to work with. Okay. So I'm popping back in. Holy smokes. That's so fun. I always get super, super energized when I start to create and teach and share some of my tips and tricks of how I do things. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm just going to take a quick check to make sure I did answer the questions. Thank you, Merla. Um, and if anybody missed anything in the beginning of this live stream, you can always catch this on the replay. And if you have any questions after when the replay goes, just put them in the comments. I'll be popping back in to answer them. And I hope you really enjoyed today's tutorial. I had so much fun sharing it. You can join us, join me next week, same time, same channel, 1130 Eastern, and we'll do a full on tutorial on no line watercoloring. And I'm super excited. That's going to be so much fun. So I hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend. And don't forget to head on over to my, um, I'll just do that quick screen share real quick. Don't forget to head on over to the blog where I've shared the two tutorials that I shared this week, two brand new tutorials, super, super fun. And I look forward to uh, sharing more tutorials next week as well. I am going to pop out of our little, get back to our screen here. And, oh, thank you, Colleen. Sorry for the delay there. We got a little bit wonky. You know, live streams do that, right? If we're live, something wonky is going to happen. So, Naomi, it was great. I'm so glad you joined us on the live stream, and I hope you can catch the replay. Colleen, yes, all of the links, I'll be going back in after the broadcast and adding them to the post. So, I'll make sure I tag. Um, you'll see it because I will add something to the comments. So, I hope that's helpful. Okay. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend and I hope you're going to have some time to yourself to do something fun and creative and I will see you next week. Thanks so much and have a great weekend.